Before we get started, let's address the elephant in the room with a hideous mustache. Chris, why do you look like a villain from a Michael Mann movie? Well, it's because we just recently recreated a movie scene from Nice Guys using the Panasonic GH6. You guys should check out that video right now. And I desperately wanted to look like Ryan Gosling, but I think I ended up more like Miami Vice Colin Farrell. Anyways, let's get on to the video. Welcome back to EPRV TV viewers, it's Chris Nichols here and you know today we're going to be talking about Sigma's brand new foray into the Fujifilm X-Mount system because Fujifilm is one of these companies that's really kind of held off a lot of third party manufacturers from making lenses. I think because they've always just had such a complete and extensive line of lenses themselves. You know there are some exceptions, I mean Zeiss did try a little bit, that kind of came and went. There's lots of manual focus glass out there as well third party and you know recently companies like Tokina and Viltrox have made forays into the this realm as well but last month Tamron had a big announcement they're now going to make lenses for the Fujifilm X mount and now Sigma has released these three lenses they're going to be coming out and so this is pretty exciting times it looks like we now have a lot of third-party autofocus support for Fujifilm X mount so here's the three lenses and we've got the 16 millimeter the 30 millimeter and the 56 millimeter they are all 1.4 maximum aperture lenses and these are part of the contemporary series of lenses so we've seen this before I like the metal construction the build quality is nice they're very simple handsome looking lenses now they are technically sealed against some elements you know ingress of dust they've got a rubber seal around the lens mount they can handle a little bit of rainwater I do still feel like the Fuji WR lenses are probably more comprehensively sealed but these have stood up to a lot of use when we've used them in the past they are quite light and compact for their given apertures now one thing that I will say is actually kind of a downside on the Sigma contemporary lenses is there's no controls on the lenses themselves you don't have an autofocus manual focus selector switch uh, you know you don't have any custom buttons on the outside and the big notable thing is no aperture rings and I know they're not the only lenses that do this for Fujifilm but I always find it kind of awkward going from lenses that do have manual aperture rings to lenses that don't. On a camera like the Fujifilm X-S10 where I'm primarily using command dials that won't be as big a problem but on a lot of the other Fujifilm bodies I always get thrown off where I reach for something that's not there trying to turn I'm like oh yeah I got to use the command dials and honestly a lot of Fujifilm command dials they're not the best out there so you might find that a little bit cumbersome. Now we're not really doing lens reviews today for a few reasons. I mean, first off, these are known commodities. The optical formulas in these three lenses have been out for a while for other mounts and there's sample galleries for each lens on deepreview.com. You should check those out, but we know what they can do. Uh, also, these are very pre-production lenses that we have here today. So the autofocus isn't final. It wouldn't be right to test them right now. But again, as I say, we, we know what to expect. What I really want to talk about today is more how these three lenses fit into the whole Fujifilm ecosystem. I mean, these are kind of competing right up against Fujifilm prime lenses that are already established. So I really want to focus on that today. Fujifilm have a 16 millimeter 1.4, just like the Sigma DCDN. Fujifilm don't make a 30 millimeter focal length, but they do make a 33 millimeter 1.4, brand new lens, very good optically. So we looked at those two together. And then Fujifilm do of course have their very famous 56 millimeter F1.2, not quite the same lens, but very similar. So those are the three lenses that I feel the Sigmas are competing against. And because they're not final, we still can't test things like autofocus, but we certainly do know the optical performance of these lenses. All three of the Sigma DCDNs are known to be very good lenses optically. I'd have no qualms about using them myself, but we wanted to kind of satisfy our curiosity. Just a little bit of sharpness. We weren't able to get all three Fujifilm lenses for very long, but certainly long enough we could do some sharpness tests. Okay, so let's start off with the 16 millimeters, both Sigma and Fujifilm. They were so similar in sharpness between the two lenses, but I would actually say that with the two samples that we had at least, the Sigma actually had a slight advantage in sharpness uh, at 1.4 in the center, but certainly in the corners as well. So wide open, I actually like the Sigma a little bit better. Now when it came to the 30 millimeter versus the 33, the Fujifilm actually I think was a little bit of a sharper, more consistent lens across the board, especially when you got to the corners. And we did test that lens. I mean, it's a new design and it is very very good optically. Now with the 56 millimeter I did the both tests at 1.4 to keep it as apples to apples as possible and honestly they looked basically the same. So I think the long story short here is that you're not really gaining big advantages optically either way so we got to look at other factors like well, price. You see price really is a big part of the selling feature here for these Sigma contemporary lenses because Although we don't have final MSRP on the X mount version of these lenses, assuming you're looking at the Canon M mount and the Sony E mount versions to figure out the price. 
you're basically looking at less than half the price versus the lenses from Fujifilm that we talked about today. I mean, that's pretty significant. I mean, again, let's just keep this in mind. The 33 millimeter is a slightly different focal length and it is optically a little bit better, I think, than the Sigma, but still, that's a big price jump. The 56 millimeter Fujifilm is a 1.2 rather than a 1.4. And so there I feel like you are getting something substantially more significant for the price difference. And the 16 millimeter, that's kind of a no brainer. I don't see why you wouldn't just go for the Sigma. So here's a question that I'm still kind of left with, you know, is releasing prime lenses really the best strategy for Sigma as their first foray into the Fujifilm system? Seeing as how Fujifilm already has a lot of prime lenses and that most existing Fujifilm users probably already have most of these focal lengths covered, that might be a tougher sell. Absolutely, if I was starting out in Fujifilm as a first time user and I wanted some nice compact 1.4 primes, these make a lot of sense, you know? And, and certainly if I didn't wanna go for a 56 millimeter 1.2, you know, I wanted the more compact 56 millimeter 1.4, well then I've got lots of options from companies like Tokina, Viltrox, and now Sigma. That might be appealing. I think it would make a lot of sense as a strategy to release lenses that Fujifilm just doesn't really cover very well. So Tamron's got that new 18 to 300 coming out. I think that's gonna do very well. Sigma has absolutely announced the 18 to 52.8. I think that's a good move in the right direction, but we're not gonna see that till late 2020 too. And I think what a lot of people are clamoring for is super telephoto zooms that again, Fujifilm don't really cover very well, though they do have one on the roadmap. Something like a 150 to 600 from Sigma would absolutely be appealing. Still, I do think that it's very easy for Sigma to take existing optical formulas, put a new lens mount on and get them into market. And I think for the value for the dollar, the contemporary lenses are excellent. So they might find customers yet. Let us know in the comments below if you think that these are the right way to go or what you'd like to see from the third party manufacturers. We'd love to see that. Again, do check out deepreview.com. There's excellent articles on this very subject matter as well. You should see those, link in the description below. And otherwise, thank you guys always for joining us. Please like and subscribe to the channel. We'll see you all again very soon.